What fictional character could someone say oh yeah, they're my role model? About that would make you slowly back away. Not exactly the same but I know a guy who said watch the Ted Bundy tapes. It's what I think about during sex and that had the same effect. That's not slowly back away. That's run forest run. Not really a role model, but those couples who compare themselves to the most toxic couples on movies and TV. Oh, we are like Joker and Harleyway are totally Ross and Racheline call Drogo and she is my deanery surprisingly, they are generally correct. Edit, to clarify, Drogo and Daenerys from the show, not books. Also, thanks for my first gold. Don't forget the originals, Romeo and Juliet. Don't forget, Romeo was totally in love with Rosalind until literally 30 seconds before he saw Juliet. That was not love. That was some crazy hormones. Hormones are a powerful drug. The Joker. Same with people who say Harley Quinn and the Joker are relationship goals. I remember when Suicide Squad came out from the theaters, a lot of couples started romanticizing it as goals. Can't blame them. The portrayal of their relationship in the movie was just a tip of a bad iceberg. Maybe, if it had been in the movie at all. There is no story. We know nothing about their relationship. If that's what the movie had been about to begin with, it might have been interesting. But people are just projecting. They are filling in the gaps. They don't want the relationship from the movie, because there is no relationship from the movie. They want the relationship that they themselves imagine that was when they look at their eccentric style. I know someone who aspires to be like Sheldon Cooper. Glenn Quagmire. Literally any recurring family guy character. Even my boy Cleveland. Zeus from Greek mythology. Tate from American Horror Story. If you actually watch the show how are you gonna share Tate gifts on Tumblr? Do you even remember what happened? Yeah, I've seen stuff like phone cases with a Tate to my Violet and him just sat there wondering if they've actually watched the show. I guess a lot of it is kids who like the edgy aesthetic without fully understanding the implications. Same kind of romanticization for Joker Harley Quinn, Fifty Shades, or Romeo Juliet. Alex from A Clockwork Orange I had a boyfriend in high school who idolized him. I hadn't seen the movie by that point and thought he was super edgy and cool. He was so obsessed with ACO that he bought a ton of copies of the book and handed them out like leaflets at school. He spoke in NADSAT. He ended up becoming a skinhead and got arrested a bunch of times. This was all after I broke up with him. I wish I had seen the movie sooner so I knew what I was dealing with. I'm now a massive Kubrick fan but ACO will always and forever be kind of ruined for me because of that. Whoa, did he even read the book? He sound like someone who never read the last bit where Alex contemplates all the destructive things he's done in the past and finally starts growing the duck up. I'm not sure if he read it, I'm guessing he did as he was so obsessed with it. I was never interested in it while we were dating, as I didn't really know what it was or what it entailed. We only dated for a few months. It wasn't until years later when I saw the movie and read the book that I looked back on that and thought wow, so many red flags, I really dodged the bullet there. The original American release of the book, as well as the movie, didn't include the final chapter where Alex basically does a 180 after being cured. Tyler Durden. My goodness is that ever a misunderstood character, and one genuinely taken as a role model by too many dudes. I think Rick from Rick and Morty is the same, a lot of people don't seem to see how much self-hatred Dan Harmon pours into that character. Straight up any character in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They aren't my role models, but they're an amazing representation of some of my baser instincts as someone who grew up as low-income poor in America. A speaking of representation can I say how refreshing it to see a gay man in a TV show who is a disgusting dumbass piece of shit. Like not even kidding used to be that the only gay guys on TV shows were like super fashionable erudite guys, but Mac is way more relatable and it's legit weirdly comforting. Patrick Bateman when I was using dating sites there was an alarming amount of men who listed him as their hero. Very few could explain why they wanted to be someone who was either a sadistic serial killer and rapist or someone who was under so much pressure from the world he lived in that he fantasized about being one. The best case scenario was that they'd never seen the film or read the book and just really wanted to look like Christian Bale and own a transparent raincoat. 
The transparent raincoat kills me. No, it's the axe that kills you. Walter White. Willy Wonka. Woodrow Wilson. Walt Whitman. Walter White. Hey, you got me. Rick Sanchez, that his name. From Rick Morty. From what I've seen dude is unhinged as duck and borders clinical narcissist. Edit, also any guy that labels himself as a pickup artist. Neither are a slow back away, both are turn and sprint. Christian Gray. I read the books out of order by mistake. There was a lot of hype around the series those days. I assumed he was a 50 years old creep at first while reading Fifty Shades Darker, because that's exactly how the character acts. My guess would be it's because the author is a 50-year-old creep. Edit, I am aware she is a woman. That just makes her a 50-year-old creep that happens to be a woman. Even the BDSM community is pissed off about this incorrect portrayal of their practices. I can understand why, what I can't understand is how a shitty fanfic became a massively popular book and spawned a movie trilogy. Unsurprisingly the movies are garbage, like really garbage. Always amazed by the number of teenagers who take Tony Montana from Scarface as a role model. The whole point of the movie is to show how terrible of a person he is and how ducked up his vision of the American dream is. Also a lot of edgy kids comparing themselves to the Joker, we live in a society. Also, Tony was an incompetent leader. People idolize him as this hardcore cocaine kingpin, but the dude couldn't even handle part of Miami. He ducked with bigger fish than himself and immediately got the smack down. If he was better at his job he would have been able to expand past part of a single city. Trevor from GTA 5 I just started playing the game and honestly I find his story segments kinda depressing. Just wait till you get to the side missions with his mom. Why he had to go stirring up those memories now? I feel like I'm having trouble remembering those missions despite playing the game twice. You hallucinate seeing her probably cause Trevor is a nutcase, and she has you do errands. Then you come back she's never been there. I think she's dead and is giving him instructions he believes are correct. Bojack Horseman. Or any characters from that show TBH. Like many people, I love the show and I find Bojack and the other characters relatable to a certain extent. But just because we identify with them, it shouldn't make us look up to them. This show gives a U.S. the ability to look at realistic human problems with eyes unclouded by biases, because obviously these are fictional characters. If you relate to anyone on that show, then there's probably something wrong in your life right now. And I'm not condemning you. I'm saying it's time to reflect and do something about it. I personally relate to Vincent Adultman, despite being over 30 in a responsible professional career, because I frequently feel like I'm a kid in an older body suddenly waking up to my adult life and feeling completely in over my head. Holy shit. I never got that before about Vincent, but that makes so much sense. Eric Cartman from South Park. Something about mashing up a kid's parents and then feeding them to the kid doesn't sit well with me. It was funny as hell that doing that pretty much bit him on the ass, when you find out in episodes 200 to 201, that he's Scott Tennerman's half-brother and both share the same father, so he effectively lost his chance at ever knowing his father because of him being a psycho. Yeah, but it's not like he really felt the consequences of that. He was more upset about the fact that he was half-ginger than that he killed his own father. Christian Grey. Thankfully didn't run into a lot of people taking him as a role model but the number of otherwise reasonable women who wanted to find their Christian Grey was disconcerting back when the books were popular. The Punisher. Frank is a very unwell man, he represents what happens when the justice system fails. Edit, well, I'll be darned, thanks for the silver. Two silvers, that's nuts, on my cake day no less. I remember reading that John Bernthal gets pissed off when fans say how much they idolize his character.